Coming up on Doctype, we're going to show you why using contrast on your website is something that you should do. Then, do you want to know where stuff is? Then the Google Maps API can help. So put down that double layer taco and pick up that triple layer taco because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by CoLab and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. All right, we are back. Did back. you miss us? A whole week off. Yeah, whole week off. Our, our first week off after 25 episodes. Right, 25 is a long enough streak. We'll call that season one. Now we're on season two. Yes. <laughs> we were actually at LessConf in Atlanta, and for all of you that met us for the first time there... We're so sorry. Really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be talking about contrast and web design, and Jim's going to show you how to use the Google Maps API in your page. Let's check it out. Contrast is one of the most overlooked concepts in visual design. Computer monitors don't offer the subtle tones and gradients that are available in print work, so when making web pages, you have to be even more conscious of using contrast. When you're creating websites, sometimes you want to draw attention to certain areas to highlight important details that a user should not miss. You can do this with various elements and principles of art and design, like color, shape, texture, and line. But one of the most powerful ways of drawing a person's attention is to create an area of high contrast. Now, contrast can mean many different things, but in this case, I'm talking about differences in the brightness or value of a color. The greater the difference, the higher the contrast. Most computer monitors aren't very good at delivering subtle changes in tone, so you'll see high contrast used all over the web to guide people's attention. Creating strong contrast starts when you're picking your color scheme. Picking good colors will build a foundation for a great design. When I'm generating a color scheme using Photoshop and other various tools, I always try to take a second to desaturate the colors and look at them in black and white. Colors are a very pervasive aspect of any project, so it's important to get these right early on. Picking good colors in the beginning will save you a lot of headaches down the road. When reviewing your color scheme for contrast, you're looking for areas where there's not enough of a difference between two colors. In some cases, there may even be too much of a difference between two colors, and you may need to adjust your tones to allow for softer gradations. Having areas of low contrast and areas of high contrast are important tools for when you're building your design. High contrast is good for getting people's attention, but that may not always be what you want it's also important to have some areas of low contrast in your designs. Using high contrast to draw the user's attention isn't very effective if the entire website is high contrast. It's important to make sure you have areas of low contrast as well. Low contrast is a good tool to use when you need to include a piece of information that isn't the most important thing on the page. A good place to use low contrast is in the caption for an image. Oftentimes you'll notice that captions are in a smaller font with a slightly gray color. This allows the site visitor to focus on the image rather than on the text. When we come back, Jim is going to show you how to embed a map of the entire world into your web page. If you're in Orlando and you're watching this show, you need to be at Colab Orlando. Located in the heart of downtown, Colab Orlando has become a magnet for creative thinkers and entrepreneurs like you and me. If you're just stopping by for the day, or if you're starting the next big thing, Colab has you covered. With affordable office space, high-speed internet, and a great environment built for collaboration, Colab is the best place to co-work. Even we work there now. And if you're not in Orlando, be sure to check out the new Colab space that just opened up in downtown Nashville. If you want to become a member of Colab, or if you're just curious, be sure to check them out at colabusa.com. The Google Maps API is the most popular way to embed geographic information into your web page. Now, it can be a little bit confusing to get started with, but once you have a firm grasp on the basics of the Google Maps API, you can build some really awesome maps. First, we'll be looking at how to get a simple map onto our page. We'll be using Google's latest JavaScript map API, version 3. If you're used to version 2, you may notice some differences. 
in particular that you don't need to register a new API key for each domain that you're hosting it on. The first thing we want to do is add the Google Maps script to the top of our page. We simply place a script tag with the URL maps.google.com slash maps slash API slash JS, and we pass it one parameter, which is sensor, and must be the value true or false. This tells Google Maps if you want to determine the user's location automatically. Next, we must create a div that will become our map. It can be anywhere in the page, but it must have an explicit height and width applied to it via CSS. It does not have to be a fixed pixel value, it can be a percentage, but if no height and width are set at all, the map will take up no space. Next, we need to write the code to initialize the map. The code that we write must be executed after the document loads. If you're using a JavaScript library, there are probably convenience functions you can use, like jQuery's document.ready, that will allow you to easily have your code run after the page loads. In our case, we'll use a simple technique of creating an initialize function to hold our code, and using the body tag's onload attribute to execute our function after the page loads. To create our map, we want to define three main properties. Where the map is centered, what level of zoom to start with, and what type of map to use, like a roadmap or a satellite view. We will create a JavaScript object called options to hold these three properties. For our center, we will create a new latlong object by calling new google.maps.latlong with the latitude and longitude of our location. We will pass this latlong object to the center attribute of our options object. We set zoom to a number 1 to 19, 19 being the most zoomed in. Finally, we set a map type by setting the options map type ID to one of the Google map types. The possible values are in the google.maps.maptypeid object and can be roadmap, satellite, terrain, or hybrid. Now that we have our options, we can finally set up our map. We will create a map variable and set it to a new google.maps.map object. To the map constructor, we will pass our target map element and our options. We get our element by calling document.getElementById and passing the ID of the element. Once we do this, we should now see an interactive map on our page centered on our desired location. The most common thing maps are used for in web pages is to indicate the location of a specific business or event. This is best done using the markers available in the Google Maps API. Adding a marker is actually pretty easy in Google Maps. We just need to create a new google.maps.marker object. We pass to the constructor a JavaScript object with our marker details. We pass position as a google.map.latlong object, and this is where our marker will be centered. We then pass our map object to the map parameter. This tells Google which map to place our marker on. Finally, we can give it a title, and this will be displayed if the user hovers their mouse over it. That's just a short introduction to the Google Maps API. The abilities of this API are enormous, and you can build some really cool stuff with it. So check out the documentation at code.google.com slash APIs slash maps. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you going to go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you going to use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com that's it for this week until next time be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype tv on twitter and if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of doctype send us an email at questions at doctype.tv and if you subscribe via itunes or rss you'll never miss an episode of doctype so why not so until next tuesday remember that every great web page starts with doctype